Hi, thanks for joining me. Do you have what it takes to study maths at the University of Cambridge? This problem here comes from step three from 2002. Step is the entrance exam you have to do if you want to study maths at Cambridge. This problem here is all to do with infinite series and it's split into a few different parts. The first part, we want to prove that for a and b between zero and one, this formula here holds inverse tangent of a plus inverse tangent of b equals inverse tangent of a plus b divided by one minus ab. Once we've done that, we move on to part two, which is prove that this formula holds the sum from r equals one to n of inverse tangent of 1 over r squared plus r plus 1 is equal to inverse tangent of n over n plus 2 and then using that we want to compute the infinite sum, the sum from r equals 1 to infinity of inverse tangent of 1 over r squared plus r plus 1 and finally the final part we want to compute the infinite sum, the sum from r equals 1 to infinity of inverse tangent of 1 over r squared minus r plus 1 so here we have plus r and here we have minus r Okay, if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to jump straight into a solution. Okay, so the first part of this problem shouldn't be too difficult, provided you know your double angle formula for tan. So we have little a and little b between, being between 0 and 1, and I'm going to define big A just to be inverse tangent of little a, and big B to be inverse tangent of little b, uh, just for notation's sake. And then we're just going to go ahead and use our double angle formula on big A and big B. So we get tan of A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B all over 1 minus tan A tan B like so, but tan of big A, just from this thing here, is going to be little a, and similarly tan of B is just going to be little b, so this right hand side simplifies to A plus B all over 1 minus AB like so. And now we've still got this left hand side here, tan of capital A uh, plus capital B, so then we're just going to take the inverse tangent of both sides to give A plus B is equal to inverse tangent of A plus B all over 1 minus AB, and we don't have to worry about a plus, you know, a multiple of pi or anything like that, because we've got a and b between 0 and 1. So I'll just let you check that for yourself. And of course, big A and big B, just using our definition, is just inverse tangent of A plus inverse tangent of B. So we get the formula we were looking for, and one thing I'll just say is that this formula also holds if either A or B are 0. So if A is 0, say, this thing here vanishes. And this top is just b over 1 minus 0, so just inverse tangent b. So we get tan inverse tangent b equals inverse tangent b, so it's trivially true. Okay, so we don't have to, sorry, we can kind of extend this to little a and little b also being 0 as well. Anyway, let's move on to the second part of the problem. Okay, so now we want to prove that the sum from r equals 1 to n of inverse tangent of 1 over r squared plus r plus 1 is given by this formula here, the inverse tangent of n over n plus 2. Now hopefully just staring at this and using the, what we've already proved, uh, the, hopefully the most intuitive way to go about proving this is just use induction, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's look at the base case when n equals 1 first. The left hand side is just going to be inverse tangent of 1 over 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, so just n equals 1, we can ignore the sum and just plug in 1, so that's going to be inverse tangent of a third, and if we plug in n equals 1 onto the right hand side we just get 1 over 1 plus 2, so inverse tangent of a third as well. So the formula certainly holds true for n equals 1. Now we've got to uh, you know, assume that it holds true for n equals 1, 2, and so on up to k minus 1. So assume true for n equals 1, 2, all the way up to k minus 1. And now we're going to have n equals k. So let n equal k. And hopefully we can see that the formula holds for n equals k as well. So let's start from the left-hand side, the sum from r equals 1 to k of inverse tangent 1 over r squared plus r plus 1. Or like with any proof by induction where you're looking at a sum, we're going to take out the last term and keep the rest as a sum. So this is just going to be the sum from r equals 1 to k minus 1 of inverse tangent 1 over r squared plus r plus 1. And then add on the k term, which is inverse tangent 1 over k squared plus k plus 1. Now this thing here, by our assumption, is just going to be inverse tangent of this guy here, where n equals k minus 1. So it's going to be inverse tangent of, when n is k minus 1, we get k minus 1 over k minus 1 plus 2, which is just k plus 1. Then add on this last term here, inverse tangent of 
1 over k squared plus k plus 1, like so. Now we've got inverse tangent of something plus inverse tangent of something. Hopefully uh, you're screaming at the screen now telling me to use this formula here, that what we've just proved, that inverse tangent of A plus inverse of tangent of B has a nice formula as an inverse tangent. And if that wasn't clear, remember we are aiming to have inverse tangent of something. So hopefully this formula is very clear to use. Uh, so we get inverse tangent of something plus inverse tangent of something. One thing we should check though is that each of the arguments are between 0 and 1 because that's what we've proved this formula for. Clearly this guy here is between 0 and 1 because k minus 1 is at least 1. So this thing here is certainly positive and it's strictly less than 1 because the denominator is bigger than the numerator. And here again it's very clear that this is between 0 and 1. So we can go ahead and use the formula. So this is just equal to inverse tangent. If we let this guy be a and this guy be b, it's going to be k minus 1 over k plus 1 plus uh, 1 over k squared plus k plus 1, all divided by 1 minus k minus 1 over k plus 1 times 1 over k squared plus k plus 1. So it's a little bit ugly with a lot of k's involved. Um, and essentially, just to simplify this, it's very basic algebra. Multiply top and bottom by this k plus 1 times k squared plus k plus 1. Perhaps expand some things out and everything will cancel nicely. And you'll be left with this equals inverse tangent of k over k plus 2. But I don't want to bore you with the details in between. As I say, it is just basic algebra. So we proved that the formula is also true for n equals k as well. And thus, by induction, we are done. So we've proved that this guy here, is, or this formula here, certainly holds true. So I'll draw a little box here, perhaps some ellipses there, so you can fill in the gaps if you want to. The next part of the problem was just to evaluate the infinite sum. So when we put, instead, instead of going just up to n, we go off to infinity. But then that, by definition, if perhaps I just clear this up, the sum from r equals 1 to infinity now of inverse tangent of 1 over r squared plus r plus 1, that's just going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum, but that's just the, that formula there. So limit as n goes to infinity of inverse tangent of n over n plus 2. And now, technically, because we, I mean, we may have to justify the limit going inside, but it's step, you won't have studied limits too rigorously, so it's fine to just put that limit in there. But because inverse tangent is a continuous function, I can bring this limit inside the brackets. So I've got inverse t tangent of the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 2, and you can use L'Hopital's rule if you want, but hopefully it's clear to see that those things there, that limit there is going to go to 1, because you've got n divided by n plus a little bit, they're both growing at the same rate, so when you look at their ratios, because they're both going to infinity, their ratio is just going to be 1, so it's inverse tangent of 1, whoopsie daisy, which is just pi over 4, which is quite nice. The sum from r equals 1 to infinity of inverse tangent 1 over r squared plus r plus 1 is pi over 4, and that uh, is the solution to part 2. Hopefully that's made sense, let's move on to part 3. So for the final part, we want to evaluate this infinite sum here. The sum from r equals 1 to infinity of inverse tangent of 1 over r squared minus r plus 1. And now, it's kind of classic with step problems where the final part of the problem, it looks really, really difficult, and this certainly by itself looks really, really difficult. But what you've got to do is to help you solve this is you use the earlier part. So we just did the, you know, essentially solve this problem where we swap this minus for a plus. So perhaps if we follow a similar kind of methodology, we should be able to evaluate this sum here. However, what we did with the previous part where we had this sign here as a plus, is we proved a formula by induction. So we kind of had this formula that was given to us, and then we proved it by induction, up, you know, the sum from r equals 1 to n, worked out what that was, and then just took the limit as n goes to infinity. Now we can try and do that, except the only issue here is we haven't been given, you know, what the, what the you know, partial sum equals to. So if I change this, you know, the sum from r equals 1 to n, we're not told what this equals to, so we can try and prove it. But we're going to still try and follow this similar, a similar methodology. So essentially, we've got to find that formula ourselves. So again, we want to find this infinite sum here. And now what we're going to do is try and do the same methodology. So we're going to define f of n to just be equal to the partial sum now. So the sum from r equals 1 to n of inverse tangent 1 over r squared minus r plus 1, and we want to try and find out what f of n is explicitly. Okay, so let's just look at the small 
uh, sort of cases of n. So f of 1, what is f of 1? Well, when I plug that in, I get inverse tangent of 1 over 1 squared minus 1 plus 1. So that's inverse tangent of 1 over 1, which is just inverse tangent 1. And you know, that is pi over 4, but I'm going to leave it as inverse tangent of 1. For now, and you'll see why in just a second. What about f of 2? Well, f of 2 is just going to be this guy, you know, when I plug in r equals 1, and then plug in r equals 2, and then sum them together. But when I plug in r equals 1, I just get inverse tangent of 1. Then plug in r equals 2, I get 2 squared minus 2 plus 1, so that's 4 minus 2 plus 1, so that's 3. Uh, so I get 1 over 3, so plus inverse tangent of 1 over 3. And then I can use my uh, formula that we proved in the first part. So this is going to be equal to inverse tangent of 1 plus a third over 1 minus 1 times a third. The numerator is just 4 thirds, and the denominator is just 2 thirds. 4 thirds divided by 2 thirds is just 2. So this is all in all just equal to inverse tangent of 2. So f of 1 is inverse tangent 1, f of 2 is inverse tangent 2. It might appear as if f of n is going to be equal to inverse tangent of n. And that can be a good guess. Let's perhaps just look at the case n equals 3 first and see if that's the case. So f of 3, what is that equal to? Well, again, it's going to be equal to f of 2 plus, when I plug in n equals 3, so when I, uh, sorry, r equals 3. Uh, when I plug that into here, I'm going to get inverse tangent of 1 over 3 squared minus 3 plus 1, which is 1 over 7. So plus inverse tangent of 1 over 7. So the f of 2 is just inverse tangent of 2. Of 2 plus inverse tangent of 7. So that, using our formula, is just going to be inverse tangent of 2 plus a 7th all over 1 minus 2 times a 7th. And you can go ahead and check. Well, that, the top of there is just 15 over 7. And the bottom there is going to be 5 over 7. 15 over 7 divided by 5 over 7 is just 3. So this is just inverse tangent of 3. So it really does seem as if f of n is just going to be equal to inverse tangent of n. So, okay, so that would be a good guess. And it turns out that that is indeed the case. f of n does equal inverse tangent of n. And what you would do is you'd go ahead and prove that by induction. So we've done the first few cases, but you still have to prove for the rest of the cases just by induction. And it's very similar to what we did when we had a plus sign here. So I'm not going to go through the details of that. I'll leave that as a little exercise to you to see that that is the case. So f of n, we're going to just assume for now that I've proved it uh, by induction, does indeed equal inverse tangent of n. And now we just have to do the final step, which is take n to infinity to get our infinite sum here. So therefore... The sum from r equals 1 to infinity of inverse tangent of 1 over r squared minus r plus 1 is just going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of this guy here, which is just this guy here. So inverse tangent of n. And as n goes to infinity, inverse tangent of n, that's inverse tangent of infinity, which is just going to be equal to pi over 2, like so. And that there is our answer. This guy here is equal to pi over 2, and that solves the problem. Anyway, I hope that has all made sense, and I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.